Well, Rise and Grind DMV, happy Saturday. We are waking up to sunny skies out there, but that's all going to change as we head into your afternoon. So keep it here. We'll break down that forecast coming up. The road to recovery in Baltimore, the latest on the cleanup efforts after the collapse of the key bridge. And remembering rapper Phil the Future, we sit down with a friend and hear about the legacy the DC rapper leaves behind. Plus, the celebration of the district's cherry blossoms continues. What's happening later today at the Wharf for Bloomeroo Spring Festival? You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good morning, you're watching DC News Now. I'm Haley Mylon. We'll get to the top stories in just a few minutes. But first, we've got to check in with Brittany because Roslyn is looking absolutely gorgeous to start out our Saturday mornings. A busy weekend here in the DMV. Brittany, we've been talking about the events all morning, but what can folks expect if they're prepping to go outside? You know, heading out the door right now, it's a quiet start out there. We are seeing those sunny skies and those temperatures not looking too bad at all. Have the jacket though when stepping out because there's a few locations that are still holding on to the 30s further off to the west out to uh, Woodstock and Loray you guys are either at the freezing mark or below the freezing mark 31 is the current temperature in Woodstock 32 as you head over there to Loray but then closer to the DC metro area we're sitting at 42 degrees Baltimore right now sitting at 43 degrees as well as uh, Hagerstown 46 is the current temperature there in Frederick. So a chilly start to our day, but afternoon highs will be right around seasonable for this time of year. So looking at satellite and radar showing you we had some passing clouds mainly off to our south in Orange and Fredericksburg, but clear skies are seen in the district, but we're going to be keeping our eye out on the storm system. This will be rolling through, giving us some afternoon showers, and it looks like an unsettling work week will be seen. So keep it here. We'll break down this full forecast coming up. Continuing our coverage of Baltimore's key bridge collapse. It's been four days since a container ship rammed into the bridge causing its collapse. The cleanup of the wreckage in the river is just getting started. The U.S. Navy is providing three heavy lift cranes to get things going. Governor Wes Moore says two of those cranes are already in Baltimore. One crane arrived last night and a fourth one is actually coming on Monday. Officials say getting these cranes in position is the first step to opening the port back up. Governor Moore says focus now is on a number of areas. That includes recovery, clearing the channel to open the port, the people impacted, including family members of the victims, and rebuilding the key bridge. Now, in terms of recovery, divers operations were suspended this week because of unsafe water conditions. Officials say the closure of the Port of Baltimore will have major impacts on the economies of both Maryland and the nation, and clearing debris and opening the channel is a complex operation. The big part and one of the challenges is that the key bridge, which sits on top of the vessel right now, that that weight is somewhere between three and 4,000 tons. So our team needs to cut that truss into sections in a safe, in a responsible and in an efficient way before it can lift those pieces out of the water. Now, the cost and timeline to rebuild is still unclear. Some experts say it could any, be anywhere from 18 months to several years to rebuild, and it could cost $400 million. President Joe Biden told reporters he'll visit Baltimore next week alongside Governor Moore. He says the federal government will foot the bill to rebuild the bridge, starting with $60 million in federal relief. And in the district, police arrested three teenage girls on Friday, charging them with murder. A lot of moving pieces here. Police say a 12 year old girl was shot in the leg yesterday, hours before she was arrested. Now she was shot in the Brightwood neighborhood near Peabody and Fifth Streets in Northwest. And that same teen is charged with allegedly beating a 64 year old to death. That is Reggie Brown. Now medical examiners say that Brown died of blunt force trauma. Now all three girls involved are now facing murder charges. They, they're not being supervised with their mothers, their parents, and you know, and the, the ones who supervise them, let them come in and live in the home and they go somewhere else. And this will happen. They raise themselves. 
they do. This is developing. We're still working to learn more about the case. We'll bring you the latest here on air and online at dcnewsnow.com. New this morning, D.C. police say three teens are charged with armed carjacking after stealing a car earlier this week. Police say on Thursday, a 15-year-old, 16-year-old, and 17-year-old, all of them boys, stole a driver's car at gunpoint on M Street in Northwest in the Mount Vernon Square area. The teens drove away in the stolen car and they were arrested shortly after. Police then recovered a gun at the scene. D.C. police are looking for two suspects tied to the deadly shooting of a well-known D.C. rapper. Police say an armed robbery of a marijuana dispensary led to the shooting. It happened in the Brightwood Park neighborhood in Northwest. D.C. News Now's Daniel Hamburg talked with a fellow rapper and a friend who knew Phil the future. The robbery happened on Wednesday afternoon just before 3 p.m. at Hot Box Uptown Dispensary here along Georgia Avenue. Police say two suspects went inside demanding property and money. In the process, 41-year-old Philip Prendergast of Silver Spring was shot and killed. This is something that you would never imagine what happened to somebody like Phil. You can see in surveillance video what appears to be two men with their guns drawn enter the dispensary. Police say the victims complied with demands, but one shot was fired, killing Philip Prendergast, known as rapper Phil DeFuture. Why you have to kill him? Why, why you couldn't spare his life? Because a life is way more important than anything that was in that store, and I'm, and I'm sure Phil knew that. His longtime friend, rapper Light Show from Southeast, says Phil was a local legend. Phil was genuinely one of the most kind-hearted, supportive, loyal, solid people I've ever met in my life. One of the dispensary owners called the incident tragic, saying Phil was more than an employee, he was family. And to lose one of our, our local legends like that is just is disheartening for sure. Light Show wants people to think of others before themselves. It's senseless. Like, I just wish, I just wish people could, like, humanize situations and, and not just think about what they're trying to get in that moment or what they feel like they need. D.C. police offers a reward of up to $25,000 for information leading to an arrest and conviction. If you have any information, call D.C. police. In Northwest, Daniel Hamburg, D.C. News Now. Daniel, thank you for that reporting and some good news. The data from D.C. police show that crime is actually down 12 percent compared to the same time last year and violent crime is down 19 percent. Now that includes a 31 percent decrease in homicides, a 13 percent decrease in robberies and the rate of sexual abuse cases is also slightly down. And there have been nearly 100 fewer cases of assault with a dangerous weapon. Prince George's County Police have named three suspects who they say tried to rob a GameStop in G District Heights. This was yesterday at a shopping center on Silver Hill Road. Police shot one of the suspects, that was Edward Brown. They shot him in the leg and they say that Brown ran towards an officer, so the officer opened fire. The other two suspects are Khalil Boyd and Kennard Bishop. All three men are facing robbery and assault charges. Police say two guns were found in the parking lot. And the officer involved is on administrative leave, which is standard any time an officer fires a weapon. To Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin vetoed legislation to legalize and establish a recreational cannabis market, saying it would endanger Virginians. Virginia legalized cannabis in 2021, meaning people 21 years old and older may buy it at dispensaries through the state's medical marijuana program. Following the veto, Virginians won't be allowed to buy it for commercial use. The bill would have allowed legal retail cannabis sales to start in May of 2025. In a statement, Governor Young Duncan said in part, quote, states following this path have seen adverse effects on children's and adolescents' health and safety, increased gang activity and violent crime. A group that pushes for the legalization and helps those impacted by the prohibition of marijuana says having unregulated black markets create more of a dangerous environment in Virginia. Not a total surprise, but that does not uh, make our disappointment any less. The list that he gave is um, a long list of misinformation, to be very honest, and that there is a lot of research that shows that regulated and tested marijuana will create a safer environment for all people, including our youth. 
Without a two-thirds majority in Virginia's General Assembly, Democrats cannot override Youngkin's veto. Now, the group says it's not giving up hope. It'll renew its efforts when a new governor takes office in 2026. Youngkin also vetoed a bill raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2026 in the Commonwealth. He said it would hurt small businesses and farmers. But Democrats in the General Assembly say the increase would help people pay for food, housing, and health care. The state's current minimum wage is $12 an hour, and a state report released last year found that a single adult living in the Commonwealth needs to make about $19 an hour to afford basic needs. All right, a reminder, the Wharf is hosting its annual Bloomer Rue today, celebrating spring in the district and, of course, our beloved cherry blossoms. It kicks off at 2 p.m. with free activities for kids and adults, including karaoke, live music, face painting, blossom martini sampling, and more. Fireworks are scheduled to start at 8.30 p.m., but, hey, the weather's got to look good before that can get underway. So much going on this Easter weekend, Brittany. What can Bloomer Rue do? Uh, event goers such as yourself right yeah expect today <laughs> yeah. how should they prepare well if you plan on heading to the wharf this afternoon make sure you say hello to me if you see me but overall we are going to be tracking some showers as we head through your afternoon so at least enjoy the morning grabbing that cup of coffee this morning we are going to be dealing with partly cloudy skies as we head into the middle of the morning still going to be dry but those showers will be returning so keep it here we'll break down that forecast coming up.